Right, straight into the big game. An Arteta masterclass and a lot of Liverpool failings. Last time I said Klopp tactically outthought Arteta as the game went on and that Arteta didn't react. He lacked pragmatism, but this time the student became the master. We'll talk a little on Klopp and Liverpool's mistakes in a bit, but Arteta set out his team perfectly for this match. As I mentioned that previous time, the Arsenal press is immense. Rice and Jorginho started together here in what you could call a 4-2-3-1, but it was essentially both of them playing hybrid roles depending on which side of the pitch the ball was on. Rice or Jorginho would push up into an 8 position. This helped Odegaard, who nominally is an 8, but also played in a hybrid 8 or 10 role. So for build up a play, this meant that Arsenal had a numerical advantage. Liverpool's press is well known and it was easily bypassed by this setup, so Arsenal could move up a pitch quicker. Also, this meant that the Arsenal press, which I've said before is immense, really contracted the space and Liverpool didn't have an out ball. Arteta pushed forward Odegaard because he knew McAllister was also important to Liverpool. Odegaard pressed McAllister every single time and you know despite this the defensive midfielder was probably the best player in Liverpool's team. The only midfielder who provided an outlet and was trying to be creative for Liverpool. This contraction of space made it difficult for Liverpool to get out when Arsenal had the ball and you could see Rice or Jorginho being like a sniper. You know they had their eyes on the ball. They could see who they had to press and it was just a brilliant setup by Arteta. Odegaard was immense. Don't know what Gary Neville sees sometimes but he was the best player in the game. We don't have number 10s in top sides anymore, but he operated like a high level elite 10 yesterday, finding the spaces, incisive passing, just a lovely footballer. Rice and Jorginho set the base and he was the conductor exploiting. When the second half started, Teto was pragmatic, once again, just like with his starting lineup. Not sure if you noticed, but Trent didn't invert in this game. He was on the right hand side of the pitch and towards the end of the first half was starting to get space on that side and whipped in quite a few dangerous crosses. So Teto withdrew Zinchenko, who was inverting sometimes in that first half and brought on a more defensive player, Kivio, to negate that threat. Trent, as it turned out, was not match fit and didn't really contribute to the game, but this was a smart move by Atea. He knew Arsenal were the dominant team, but also recognised that Trent was starting to get more influence and he needed to put a stop to that straight away. On the Liverpool side of the game, I was surprised that Joe Gomez was inverting and Trent didn't. Gomez was tetchy and horrible on the ball at the start of the game, even though he's played really well in recent times for Liverpool. And also, Klopp tactically, the lineup played into Arsenal. Arsenal's hands. Three strikers who come towards the ball meant it played perfectly into Arsenal's press. When you have a team that presses as well as Arsenal, you need someone to stretch that defence to stop Saliba and Gabriel pushing up and contracting the space. Nunes was that player, but it seems he couldn't play the full 90 minutes. And without him or Salah, Liverpool have no pace up there. Klopp did ask Jones to drop deeper to help Liverpool break Arsenal's press, and it did work in the second half, but the mistakes killed them after, really. Alisson will get a lot of flack for his supposed mistake, but Van Dijk was at fault for all three goals. First one here, he is in no man's land. The second, he lets the ball bounce, then isn't strong enough to hold off Martinelli. Look here, Alisson kicks him due to him not holding off Martinelli. And the third one, again he's hesitant to go towards the ball. He actually looks over his shoulder, he's well covered there, goes across, but by the time he gets there, he ends up just deflecting the ball and it not makes Alisson. Keeper isn't to blame here. Van Dijk accepted host game his errors. Hey, even the best can have a bad game. Arsenal should definitely be pleased with the win and I'm fine with them celebrating the way they did. Although Arteta did make it feel like they'd won a trophy, I think they should be winning games at home even against the top side if they want to challenge for the title. On the other side, I think Liverpool would have been happy with the draw. So to perform so abysmally against Arsenal after a good season, I don't think it's such a bad thing. You can think of, think of it as a point drop to rather than three points and I'm sure Klopp will get them going again. I want to move on to some of the games in the Premier League this weekend. Gary O'Neill is doing a great job. I know they fumbled the bag a bit against United on Thursday, but what performance at Stamford for bridge and I've got a lot of time for him as a coach and a manager. You've got to remember he didn't have a pre-season at all with this team and he has them purring I think. He's got Mateus Cunha scoring goals which no one else could previously do and Pedro Neto one of my favorite players in the league. Those injuries stunted his development but around four years ago I remember telling my Portuguese backroom staff that he'll be as good as Mo Salah one day. I still believe that kid has the physical and technical abilities but mentally he's always making good decisions. That's where a player like that really stands out. Let's Let's give a shout out to Eric Ten Hag too, combining the youthfulness of his team with some of the experienced players and they're getting results. Still think he should be kept away from transfers but they've had a couple of good results and they're finally giving their billion pound striker some opportunities. You can't tell if he's good enough if you don't give him the chances to score. Of course the flip side is the better strikers also make their own chances. So credit to Ten Hag for the small revitalization there though Martinez will be a big miss if he's out long term. Finally I want to talk about Chris Wilder and Roy Hodgson. As a coach 
myself have differing opinion on these in comparison to the fawning British media who hold them up as some sort of magical legendary coaches. First Sheffield United in their first half against Villa defended like an absolute pub team. In fact a pub team would have defended better. While they will keep getting jobs and keep failing. That's the circus that goes on in British football. His jibe at refs about sandwiches was just the icing on the cake of stupidity. Hodgson is another one. Palace have a good young team that will go nowhere under him and literally have gone nowhere under him. Steady hands blah 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 yet he's throwing their best player on to get injured three days after he's pulled up with a sore hamstring in another game. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Don't forget to subscribe and like and as always thank you for watching.